Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Russia and the USA have always tried to remain ahead of each other when it comes to military power. Keeping this in view, the MiG-29 was the Soviet Union's answer to the American F-16. It was a superb aircraft in its own right. Yet, it did not achieve the same level of success as its Western counterpart. Join us as we dive deep into the story of why MiG-29 was not as popular as F-16. In 1988, two advanced Soviet fighter jets entered British airspace, but rather than being seen as enemies, they were welcomed as friends with no hostile intentions. The purpose of their presence was to showcase one of the greatest air shows ever seen. As the pilots performed in front of a global audience, onlookers couldn't help but wonder if the Soviet Air Force had gained a technological advantage over the West, and if the future of air warfare would be influenced by the Soviet Union. This story revolves around one of the greatest fighter jets ever built, but unfortunately, it emerged at the wrong time and in the wrong place. The backdrop for this development can be traced back to the Vietnam War and subsequent Israeli-Arab conflicts, which had contrasting outcomes for the Soviets. The MiG-21s performed admirably in Vietnam against the technologically superior F-4s, but their performance was notably lacking, if not terrible, against Israeli forces flying similar jets. In response to this, the Soviets established the 1521 Training Center, known as the Soviet Top Gun Program, and initiated the development of fourth-generation fighters. However, the situation changed once again as the Americans, fearing the Soviet MiG-25s, learned about the FX program and the next generation of U.S. fighters. In response, the Soviets launched the LPFI project, calling for the creation of light and heavy fighters that could share design features but serve different purposes. This initiative aimed to address the evolving dynamics of aerial warfare. The defection of Viktor Belenko in 1976 exposed the facade surrounding the MiG-25 and provided the West with crucial information on the aircraft's electronics. Following this revelation, the Mikoyan and Gurevich design team faced the challenge of discarding their previous design philosophy and building a new jet from scratch. This new project aimed to create a fighter that could compete with the advancements made in the West, particularly in the United States. The requirements set by the Soviet government for the new fighter jet were exceptionally ambitious. The aircraft needed to showcase extraordinary maneuverability for dogfighting, a skill the Soviets recognized as crucial based on lessons learned from experiences in Vietnam and conflicts with the Israelis. Additionally, the new fighter had to possess beyond visual range capabilities to counter the advanced U.S. missiles, such as the AIM-7 and their powerful radars. The design team faced the challenge of meeting these requirements, and the Klimov Bureau was assigned the task of developing the RD-33 engines. Opting for a two-engine configuration to provide sufficient power, each engine generated around 8,000 to 300 kilograms of thrust. This resulted in a thrust-to-weight ratio greater than one, a critical factor for the aircraft's agility in dogfights. The MiG-29, classified as a light fighter, incorporated innovative features like leading-edge root extensions, extending wings up to the canopy and a hump behind the cockpit to house extra fuel and electronics. The design also included two vertical stabilizers for improved control and maneuverability. The engines were separated into two gondolas on the underside of the fuselage to enhance survivability, maintenance, and replacement. This combination of features gave birth to the MiG-29, which was not merely an elegant airframe with good aerodynamics. The Soviets aimed to focus on the aircraft's capabilities, introducing the new infrared search and track system called Kolos, mounted in front of the canopy. Kolos allowed the pilot to track and fire infrared-guided missiles in real-time without relying on radar. The MiG-29 was the first Soviet jet to incorporate composite materials in its construction. Notably, it introduced the helmet-mounted aiming system, allowing the pilot to lock onto enemy jets outside of their heads-up display and launch missiles simply by looking. It was a feature adopted by the U.S. much later. The MiG-29's effectiveness in combat was further enhanced by new R-73 missiles with thrust vectoring systems, making them extremely agile. These missiles could be launched off-board while maneuvering, allowing the pilot to take evasive action simultaneously. Despite being a formidable dogfighting aircraft, the controversial statement is made that the MiG-29 was never a bad jet. It simply wasn't properly developed for its intended role. The Soviet air warfare doctrine envisioned the MiG-29 as a frontline fighter, with the heavier Su-27 performing long-range patrols and deep interceptions. The MiG-29's role was to engage the remaining enemy air threats and support ground-attack jets like the Su-25. Fazatron, 
the company developing the N019 radar for the MiG-29, opted for an old Castle Grain antenna instead of a planar array based on the Sapphire 23 ML. This choice made the radar less effective at tracking targets over longer distances and more susceptible to jamming. Despite being equipped with the new R-27 missile, these missiles were found to be extremely unreliable. The Soviets, still angered by a recent defection, took extensive measures to prevent leaks to the West. Engineers worked in shifts to avoid outdoor testing when American spy satellites passed over Moscow. However, Fazatron engineer Adolf Tolkachev betrayed them by selling information about the new Soviet electronics and missiles, including the MiG-29 and Su-27 radar, to the CIA. Tolkachev was captured and executed in 1986. Facing these security breaches, the Soviets undertook a modernization effort to address the flaws in the MiG-29. The updated variant, known as the MiG-29AS Dahlia 943 or MiG-29S, featured an upgraded radar, additional jamming equipment in the enlarged hump behind the pilot, and increased fuel capacity for an extended range of about 100 kilometers. The MiG-29S was also equipped with air-to-ground weaponry and had the capability to carry nuclear bombs. By the time of the Farnborough Air Show in 1988, the Soviets recognized the future of air warfare would require multi-role aircraft. They began developing a new MiG-29M variant and a carrier-based MiG-29K. However, these projects coincided with the Chernobyl disaster in 1986 and a declining Soviet economy, leading to their cancellation and leaving the MiG-29S as the most sophisticated variant when the USSR collapsed. The MiG-29's bad track record began when the Iraqi Air Force acquired these jets during the Kuwait invasion. Lack of new R-73 missiles forced them to use outdated R-60s during the Gulf War against the Americans. The MiGs lost all engagements with F-15s and managed only one kill against a tornado. In 1999, Yugoslav MiGs faced off against F-15s and F-16s, losing every engagement due to non-functional radars and the ineffective R-27 missiles. The R-27 was compared to the early development troubles of the AIM-7 in the US. It was considered a subpar missile. The Soviet Union encountered challenges with their missile technology particularly with a missile that proved to be ineffective during training and testing at the Mary Air Base, known as the Soviet Top Gun School. This shortcoming became evident during the conflict between Eritrea and Ethiopia in the late 90s. Ethiopian Su-27s, piloted by Russian aviators, engaged Eritrean MiG-29s. Despite the Su-27s being superior flankers, not a single Su-27 was shot down, while five MiG-29s were lost. Remarkably, out of over 30 launched missiles, only one managed to hit its target. The limitations of the MiG-29 missile technology became further apparent in the ongoing conflict between Ukraine and Russia. The Ukrainian Air Force, utilizing MiG-29s in their updated Mu-2 variant, integrated AGM-88 HARM missiles with assistance from NATO. In the ongoing war against Russia, these aircraft successfully conducted suppression of enemy air defenses missions, scoring hits on Russian anti-aircraft systems in the surrounding region. Additionally, Ukrainian MiG-29s were deployed extensively against Russian drones. Despite these successes, Ukrainian pilots faced formidable challenges. The pilots themselves acknowledged the lack of proper mid-range missiles, coupled with the Russians employing long-range R-37Ms, making their air-to-air -air combat missions exceedingly difficult. The aging nature of Ukrainian MiGs and the inherent limitations of the Soviet system architecture further complicated the integration of modern NATO missiles, emphasizing the obsolescence of these aircraft in contemporary air warfare scenarios. However, the story of the MiG-29 takes an unexpected turn with India's intervention. In the early 2000s, India ordered further development of the MiG-29K for their aircraft carriers. Over time, MiG developed the heavy, updated KNM-2 variants catering to Indian and export requirements. The latest iteration, named the MiG-35, represents the pinnacle of MiG-29 evolution. It features fly-by-wire controls, a new radar, an advanced set of weaponry, and modern electronics, including targeting pods. Despite being based on the same old airframe, the MiG-35 is a comprehensive upgrade, addressing the shortcomings that plagued earlier versions. We can say that MiG-29 faced major setbacks due to missile inefficiencies and technology limitations, notably in conflicts involving Eritrea, Ethiopia, and Ukraine. However, India's investment in further development, 
leading to the creation of the MiG-35, signals a renewed chapter for this iconic jet, showcasing its adaptability and continued relevance in modern air warfare. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video and watch the next video as well. See you again.